All right. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, session T16. Uh, and I believe there's a parallel session going on in the other channel, right? Uh, and it's our final session. So yep. uh, before we start, I just want to thank the organizers for, for a fantastic event. And it was a true integration of art and science and, and humanities and everything in between and beyond. Um, and I hope we can, we can continue these discussions going forward. Um, uh, the first talk for today is by Samal Basran from the University of Buffalo. And uh, the title of his talk is Unified Mechanics Theory, Unification of Thermodynamics and Newtonian Mechanics. Uh, Simal, go ahead, please. Thank you. I'll share my screen now. Um, okay. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about unification of laws of thermodynamics and then uh, Newtonian mechanics. Oh, by the way, thank you very much for inviting me to this conference. So I will go over the objectives, introduction, the literature, the theory, mathematical, experimental proof, a recent work in the literature by others and conclusions. Since I have too many minutes here, actually I have a much longer presentation. So I submitted my long presentation and it will be available if you're interested, you can download it. So what is the objective? So the objective is essentially establishing laws of nature governing behavior of inorganic and organic materials and structures during their lifetime without the need for phenomenological empirical models based on test data. So my background is I studied, I study mechanics of electronic materials essentially a typical solder joint in your laptop, it starts in perfect shape and after a while it will go into this shape. So this is as a result of degradation and failure because of thermomechanical, electrical, chemical loads. Now to be able to study such a problem, first we need the laws of Newton. So Newton has three laws. Basically the first law is force is equal to zero. Second law is the uh, F equals MA in the simplest form. And the third law is action and reaction. Actually, Newton published this, this in 1687, but Hooke actually published the third law 10 years before him, which was the force equals stiffness times uh, displacement. Now, what are the problems with Newton's laws? There is no concept of energy loss, degradation of the system, no entropy generation, so for example, according to Newton's law, if you have a soccer ball, acceleration will be force divided by mass. And then that acceleration, initial acceleration goes into infinity. It never slows down. It is not possible according to that equation. Uh, according to the third law, action, reaction, if you apply a force, the displacement and the spring will be force divided by the stiffness. But over the first day of the stiff, uh, spring, and then after 100 years, you will have the same displacement according to this equation. There is no degradation, there is no aging, there is no that thermodynamic factors in the equation, which is not true. Um, so if we go to laws of thermodynamics, mainly we are interested in the 1850s, Rudolf Clausius and William Thompson whose uh, honorary name is Lord Calvin. They formulated the first and second law for thermodynamics. First is the conservation of energy. And the second law is that a natural process, the sum of entropies of interacting systems increases and entropy of an isolated system never decreases. Entropy generation rate is minimum when entropy is maximum. Now, um, I see there are different People use different definitions for entropy, but in the thermodynamic sense, most scientifically accepted term for entropy is the energy unavailable for work due to dissipation and or loss and can be created but cannot be destroyed. Uh, there is conservation of energy, but there is no conservation of entropy. Um, so the, se the second law, if you go to uh, Boltzmann's equation, Boltzmann's uh, book paper in German. 
The second law states that there's a natural tendency of an isolated system, living or non-living, to, de to de degenerate to a more disordered state. Now, I noticed that there is some confusion about this disordered state. This order is, means that the order changed with respect to the initial order. So this order does not mean that there is no order, just it is relative with respect to initial state. Um, this is a definition. So, and then when irreversible entropy generation rate becomes zero, the system reaches the end because it can no longer generate entropy. This can be defined as a failure, dying, or a predefined pr process ends. So in a st statistical mechanics, entropy is an extensive property of thermodynamic system and it is related to number of microstructural configurations or microstates that are consistent with the microscopic quantities and laws of nature and boundary conditions that characterize the system. So a system can only go into so many microstructural configurations based on given uh, external and internal conditions. So, um, Going again to Boltzmann's paper and Maxwell's paper, where entropy is the natural logarithm of the number of microstates and multiplied by Boltzmann constant. Of course, Boltzmann never gave this equation. This was in uh, Maxwell Planck wrote the equation after he passed away in 1901. And then M Maxwell used WW is essentially in German, it means probability which is the term Warshine Lictate, they use the W, he put it here. And this is on Boltzmann's uh, grave. Now, up to now, or at least 20, 30 years ago, it was assumed that Boltzmann's formulation is for gases. And if you open still many physics books, they will say it is only for gases. But I believe many people who wrote those books, they never, Rederived Boltzmann's equation. Um, so I spent 25 years of my life proving in the lab that this equation is also valid for solids. Um, actually, if you go to the rederive the formulation in the original paper, the or derivation is not restricted to gases. He just runs a mind experiment. He says if we have these hypothetical uh, balls, like a gas, atoms can move around. He, he essentially, if you say, well, there is a friction between these particles, then you just lower the number of possibilities. But essentially, ignoring the friction between the particles, you just give you, you get, you end up with the higher limit of possible uh, states. And if you have a bond between these particles, you will have a lower state. But the formulation Boltzmann has in this paper, which I put it completely in my new book, has absolutely does not say any uh, restriction for gases. And he says so in, in his paper. Um, and in his formulation, he specifically said this is for arbitrary material. But he does give his formulation ends up with the upper bound for possible states. Of course, gas will have a larger number of microstates than solid. Now, what is the definition of entropy in Boltzmann's formulation? Let's take a box with four balls, and then they are A, B, C, D. So we will call this order, okay? Why, why is this an order? Because they met the alphabetical names, but it is just a reference state, okay? And then I, uh, shake this box and this a b c d will change if they become a b d c this is a disorder with respect to the initial one but however at each state they have to have some equilibrium because they are still sitting at the box they are not out of the box and they have only 40 24 possibilities and if these balls are not attached to each other you have 24 possibilities, but let's say I have friction between them, they're solid, A and B 
are connected by internal friction and D, C and D are connected by internal friction. That doesn't mean that Boltzmann's formulation is not valid. It just says that you will not have 24 possibilities. You will have probably, you will have less than 24 possibilities. Um, so I spent, as I said, about 25 years proving this in the lab, mostly experimentally, that Boltzmann's solution is true for solids. And in 2000, um, uh, 2015, two professors from University of Pennsylvania Medical School translated Boltzmann's paper into English and published in the journal Entropy, and they their conclusion was identical to my conclusion that his formulation is not for gases, but it is for general uh, material. Um, so why do we need to combine these two laws? Because laws of Newton gives me the response of a system in the space-time space -time coordinate system to an external disturbance for the first day, for the first moment of the structure for the system, but it doesn't tell me what will happen after 10 years or 100 years or 1,000 years, because there is no any thermodynamics in these equations. But the laws of thermodynamics give me this equation. So as a result, I can use second law of thermodynamics from Boltzmann's derivation and derive a thermodynamic state index, which essentially has to combines the first law and second law of thermodynamics. And this thermodynamic state index will always go between zero and one. As zero, it means the system, the isolated system is at the beginning. And then when thermodynamic state is one, entropy generation rate is zero. Um, so essentially the initial state, you can call it either you know, new material or undamaged or essentially phi is zero. And then it has a corresponding initial entropy value, but you can take the initial entropy as zero, but it will always have some initial entropy value. And it will have an associated disorder W naught in Boltzmann's definition. And then it will, at, at another state, it will go to an alternate disordered state. It will have an entropy of S, corresponding uh, W thermodynamic state value of phi. So as a result, you will always go between uh, phi zero and phi one in an isolated system. Now, since I am running out of time, I will quote James Rice, uh, who is a, a mechanics professor at Harvard. In 1971 paper, he said, at any given temperature and pattern of internal rearrangement within the material, the rate at which any specific structural arrangement occurs is fully determined by thermodynamic forces. So essentially, where I move within the thermodynamic state index axis is always determined by thermodynamic forces. Um, and how do I go from point A to point B? Um, I'm gonna quickly go over here. If you go to Callan's Thermodynamics and Introduction to Thermostatics books, he, def he has an excellent definition of fundamental relation. So that means for the system, you have to derive the fundamental relation from physics, not from experiments. And then that will give you how- you Five more minutes. How many, five more minutes? Okay, yes. it will give you the fundamental relation. It will show you how it progresses from an order to disordered state. Now, any system all you get, or inorganic or inorganic system will always exist on an energy topology. It cannot exist anywhere else. Essentially, let's say I have a ball, a system, leave it, it will stop at a valley, you kick it, it might go in different directions and then it will come to another valley and stop. You cannot change that. Now it can go to different places, 
but it will always go between zero and one. That you cannot change. And it will be in equilibrium uh, during these processes. So as a result, once you unify these two laws, you end up with the second law of the unified mechanics theory, which is the combination of Newton's law and uh, thermodynamics law. The second law ends up in this form. Phi is the thermodynamic state index. Initial is zero. So the equation collapses to Newton's second law. And then phi eventually becomes one. One minus one is zero. Velocity becomes zero. The ball will come to a state stop. And again, for the third law, the stiffness will degrade. Initially, you have phi zero. Again, you have Newton's third law. But eventually, the system will fail. Stiffness will be zero because phi will be one. So these are the unified laws. But phi is not a phenomenological coefficient. It is calculated from the fundamental relation from physics. Um, if you want to simplify them for a linear small system, assuming mass doesn't change, and then the increments are very small for change in the thermodynamic state index, you can have f equals ma1 minus phi. And the third law, again, d phi over du is negligible. Then you end up with this equation. Um, now, what is the difference between unified mechanics and Newtonian mechanics? If you have a simple structure you're analyzing with finite element method, under a load, you will have only a nodal displacement as your nodal unknown. But in, in unified mechanics theory, you will have nodal displacement and entropy generation rate as a nodal unknown, and they are linearly independent. But most importantly is unified mechanics theory introduces an additional access to Newton's space time because uh, Newton's space time cannot represent the material. Let's say I have a five year old. Minutes left. Okay, I have a five year old and 100 year old. The on time scale, I can separate them. X, Y, Z, I can separate them, but if they both if the five-year-old has a stage four cancer and then 100-year-old is also sick, their thermodynamic state index is 0.99. They are equal. As a result, once, and this is, of course, a linearly independent axis, it means you cannot represent this information with x, y, z time. Therefore, the derivative of displacement with respect to entropy is non-zero. If you look at the continuum mechanics books, uh, the derivative of, um, based on Newtonian mechanics, derivative of displacement with respect to entropy is zero. But here, that is not equal to zero because that is a linearly independent axis. Um, that is the biggest difference. And you, without this additional axis, you cannot represent the nature. Um, and then you can derive fundamental equations from physics. I'll skip this one. So this idea first published in 1998 in a paper with my PhD student Chang Yong Yan, who was his uh, PhD a year before. And then uh, it was reformulated in 2004, and Sosnovsky and Sharbako uh, wrote a mathematical paper on this theory in 2016. Uh, my book is coming out on by Springer and Nature uh, Introduction to Unified Mechanics Theory with Applications in August. If you're interested, you can. Uh, look at the book. And then we also, I edited a special issue of Journal Entropy recently by the most prominent people in the field. Uh, I couldn't get Dr. Haddad's paper. <laughs> uh, and then we also have a unified mechanics theory group on LinkedIn. I think there are close to 1,900 scientists in that group. If you are interested in discussions, you are welcome to join. Um, I have experimental verifications in the rest, um, but I don't have time. So, but the, the thermodynamic state index will always go between zero and one for every situation. And I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you very much, Samal. That was a fantastic talk. Uh, uh, it's 12.20 now. The, the uh, second talk is supposed to start at 12.20, but uh, maybe we'll take one one or two questions and then go for the next one. 
Does anybody have a question? Or we could perhaps reserve some time at the end for it. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions anytime. <laughs>